All right, guys, so we're going to talk a little bit about um, the eye muscles and eye movements. The, the last post I did, um, a lot of people asking a few questions about uh, eye movements and eye muscles. Now, just a bit of a disclaimer before we get into this is that um, none of what I'm about to say is going to uh, replace medical advice. Um, if you're suffering from any you know, um, traumatic brain injuries or, or dizziness or concussion, post-concussive symptoms or balance disorders, then... Um, really approach any visual drill with caution and uh, if you can um, get get assessed by someone who does this type of work or even just check with your doctor before you do it because they just don't um, uh, like because if I'm if I'm showing this here now um, I don't know your your medical background your history all that sort of stuff so approach this with caution because as you'll see with the science and the imagery about when we move our eyes when we move our eyes we we essentially interact with the entire brain um, the circuitry that's involved with eye movements is crazy. Like, it's it's insane. So this is where you can see people who do functional neurology really well, like people like Professor Ted Carrick, who's in the US, he's a chiropractor. He can uh, essentially uh, have someone who's in chronic pain, um, he's been in chronic pain for like 20, 30 years, and he can, because he understands the neurology of these eye movements so well, he can essentially assess all these different pathways and then do a simple eye movement and you know within seconds and minutes that person's out of pain and that's because they understand intricately how sim those simple eye movements how they then cascade back into the brain so that's the positive side of it I just think about that potentially done at the wrong rate or the wrong time the wrong drill the wrong time they're all good but are they all good for you at, the, you know, at this time? It just depends on your individual background. So all I'm saying is just proceed with a little bit of caution. I haven't seen many um, people respond badly, but it can happen. So it's just something to be aware of, okay? So a little bit of a lecture on it. So what we're gonna talk about is the, the basic eye movements. So, you know, we have six eye muscles in each eye and, and those eye muscles um, project into different parts of, the, well, they're controlled by different parts or different cranial nerves and those different cranial nerves project to different parts of the brain stem. But it's much more complicated than that as well. There, there are different types of movements that are more targeted to certain parts of the brain, such as frontal lobe. Obviously, occipital lobe, occipital cortex at the back of the brain is obviously involved in all parts of vision. Um, but there is a lot of crossing over with different areas of the brain. So when I try to give you a brief rundown, it's in no way um, claiming that we understand the complexity of these eye movements and more and more research is coming out each day into well it does this it does that and it does amazing things for posture when you think about like you know all the sensors our main sensors 60 percent of um yeah you know, you know, like the uh, the weight of the you know 60 percent of um our sensory perception is from vision you know it's in the eye movements and all that sort of stuff like that so it has a huge part and it's also part of our you know our postural and our movement awareness so, so we have the vestibular system and the visual system and the proprioceptive system the proprioceptive system is all the receptors within the body within tissues of the body and then we have the vestibular system which interacts very closely with the visual system um, the vestibular system is about balancing your head in space and your body in relation to your head and then the visual system uh, people most people think of visual system as you know can you see and like the, the, the makeup of the optic nerve and, and different parts of the eye and that's just a little part of it but I'm really talking more about eye movements themselves and how they can be used not only as an assessment but as a very very powerful uh, therapy I mean there's so many cases I could talk to you about um, when I've used just simple uh, mapping remapping eye um, blind spots in the eyes and, and that's you know giving people uh, total function like very very quickly so the ones we're going to talk about today, ones I talked about in the post, you know, there's different types of eye movements. There's uh, what's called smooth pursuits. And smooth pursuits is um, essentially your eyes pursuing um, a moving target. Um, we're going to do it with your head still. In real life, you, your head would be moving as well, and there'd be all these other sort of head movements and reflexes going on. But to train smooth pursuits, essentially all you're going to do is look at a target, and you can go in straight lines, you can go horizontal, Horizontal, vertical, different angles. So if you imagine 
in front of our eyes there's like a like a compass so we have we have up so one two three four five six seven eight main sort of angles in the visual field we the eyes um, it's, it's much more beneficial if the eyes have full awareness of what's happening in those eight quadrants uh, your brain's going to feel a lot safer so when we train it you've got all these straight lines and stuff like that but you know nature doesn't work in straight lines so I like to really do like something like a figure of eight because it's, it's a bit more complex and complex movement builds the brain doesn't it so then we'll go you know you got a figure of eights and if, once your brain starts getting used to that you can start writing your name you can start writing other things keep it slow uh, if you want to work out which eye is um, dominant or not you can just do this make a little hole about that big and you just bring it to one eye so my eye does want to go to the left which means the left is my dominant eye so this is the weaker eye so what do, I need, what do I need to do I need to train that eye I close my left eye and then do some figure of eights figure of eights in the weaker eye different um, directions as well and then after I've done the weak eye, I want to train it with the strong eye to get them working together again so they become buddies. And the strong eye is not so strong. Okay, so the way to find it is like that. Bring it to one eye. It'll gravitate to the dominant eye. The other eyes you got, the eye you got to train. To cross-check that chest test, you can basically bring it towards your nose, right through the middle. You close one eye and look out. You should be able to see. If you close the other eye, you might be blocked. The eye that's blocked is the eye that's uh, obviously non-dominant. And that's just cross-checking this one. Just make sure that you're not, um, you know, you're just getting double information. So there's Smooth Pursuits. And then we have um, Near Far, and that's essentially, you can use anything. So I'm looking at a near target, and I'm shifting to a far target. Near Far. That's activating different parts of the brainstem when you're looking um, off into the distance, that's acting, acting, uh, activating the abducens nerve, which is related to the pons, it's related to the sympathetic nervous system. When you're looking towards a close target, uh, not too close, but you know, 10, 20 uh, centimeters, that's more related to uh, cranial nerve three, uh, oculomotor nerve in the midbrain, and that's actually related to the parasympathetic system. So you can modulate the balance between your sympathetic and parasympathetic just by doing eye movements. So if you have near far, one, two, one, two, one, two. And then you have convergence divergence. So that's essentially bringing the target towards your nose. This is curve convergence. Yep, it's about as far as I get. And then you have divergence. Same circuitry as we just mentioned before. Divergence. Okay, so if you're someone who's stressed a lot, you're probably more than likely going to be looking in the distance more often than not. So your brain will actually like convergence drills. And again, with all these things, just proceed with caution. You don't want to drive the system, drive your system, your nervous system, your neuraxis uh, further than it can handle, okay? Because you'll know it's gone further than it can handle because change happens at the speed of the nervous system and you might get dizzy, okay? So what that usually means is if you've gone too many reps, gone too fast you need to be in a seated position or something you need to change the position that you're in or maybe you might be just simply dehydrated um, you know low blood sugar so think these are all things you got to look at okay so any confusion here just let me know and I'll, I'll help you out so we had near far and then we have convergence and divergence and then we have um, so we had smooth pursuits and then we have isometrics so you're just holding uh, head is still and your eyes are just looking at a target, can be just a distant target, just pick a target. Hold that position, and then you change positions, going all the way around the compass. Uh, they activate different parts of the brain, different parts of the cerebellum, so when you look up to your right, you're activating the right cerebellum. When you look over to your right, you're activating the right cerebellum. Down to the left is right cerebellum, up and to the left, left cerebellum across to the left, left cerebellum, down and to the right is right cerebellum. So when we're talking about, um, you know, these are all things that I employ sometimes uh, in training. Um, sometimes we might hold an eye position while someone's doing an isometric drill, so we're waking up different parts of the brain. Um, 
whilst uh, whilst we're doing some sort of movement. And then we have saccades, and saccade is, saccades is one of mo the most important uh, drills for the eyes, and it's been sh shown to have a massive effect on motor activity. And saccades is essentially when your eyes are skipping from target to target very quickly. You might notice that if you've been in a car or on a train and you're looking outside and your eyes are going or you've seen someone at, as they're doing that, you'd see their eyes flickering really fast. That's a saccade. Saccades have been mostly linked to the frontal lobe, but lots of other parts of the brain, of course, obviously those eye muscles shifting very quickly between each other. And essentially the way you would train it is you can do uh, you know, horizontal saccades and you're just basically flicking your eyes between the target. You're not just going boom, 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 boom. You're essentially flicking, holding for like a brief moment, but the movement between the eyes is fast. If you've had any history of uh, head trauma or concussion, you'll find these eye drills very hard and they're probably, they are gonna be beneficial for you, but you need to see a professional to be able to put you through the program properly at your own pace. So we have um, horizontal saccades and we have vertical saccades and we have different angles. If you can't see, hopefully you can see my eyes are darting between target and target. Really awesome, in many ways, the saccades, is, um, saccades, saccades, whatever you want to call them, uh, they, for instance, if you're doing, if you're in the gym and you're, you're wanting to do um, like a heavy lift, like such as a deadlift, doing a set of saccades will actually drive um, motor activity um, through, like it'll essentially tell the frontal lobe to send down information down the spine to activate all the the the, um, the muscles of the spinal cord, so it essentially boosts neuromuscular function for a, for a brief moment. It's like a little supercharge, yeah. It's like a little turbo boost. Um, I often will do saccades when I'm walking. You know, I'll just be walking along and I'll be doing saccades as I'm walking. You can do it when you're driving. You can do it at the um, you know at the traffic lights. So many times you can do this sort of stuff. Uh, and then we have VOR. The, the VOR is called vestibular ocular reflex and that's a pretty awesome drill and that's basically your head moving but your eyes remaining fixed on a target. And people, and, and when I've explained to people this reflex is involved in gait, people don't really get it. But when you think about gait, when you're walking, if I'm walking forward like that, I'm already activating the VOR because we're always generally looking at something. We're looking at a target in the distance. As I'm doing that, I'm rotating this way and my eyes are fixed on a target. My neck is moving. It's really my, my torso moving, but my neck is moving. So VOR, very important for gait. How do we train it? Target in front of you, horizontal VORs, your eyes is fixed on the target. What you see with a lot of people is that as they start to do this, they'll have one side or the other. They'll move their, they'll move their eyes away and that's because they've lost the, the their brain's lost the ability to coordinate the eye muscles to be able to maintain gaze on that target whilst their head is moving. So there's an incredible amount of complexity happening to be able to make that actually work. Uh, lots of communication between the eye muscles and the brain stem and the neck muscles and all this sort of stuff. So if that's happening for you, you need to slow it down. Now I'm giving you guys really broad based approach, which is all gonna be great, but clinically it's always better when you find, when you have more precision and you work out why you are doing a certain drill or not. It's all well and good to have the information um, and it definitely does work. But, you know, the way I work clinically, we wanna work out what sort of drill do we need to do at, right, at, at any given time and why, okay? Because then if you have a reason why, then you're gonna get a, a better result generally. Another thing I didn't mention is uh, peripheral vision as well. One way to assess peripheral vision is just go like this, bring your arms out wide, have your eyes looking straight ahead and see when you can lose the peripheral target and see if one side is better than the other. That's a little bit harder to train um, yourself uh, but what you can do with that is if you wanted to train that, you could essentially um, be looking at straight ahead and you could be touching your nose or touching your nose and then trying to reach out into that area. And what that's actually doing is training peripheral vision um, by remapping that area for, for your brain. All these things, especially this one, is going to give a lot, a lot of safety back into the brain. And we're talking about 
about pain. Pain is essentially an abundance of threat in the system. When we reduce threat in the system, potentially pain will be less likely to, uh, to be there. So if you have any questions about this, I know we covered a lot just now. If you have any questions about it, just, just let me know. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's some pretty cool stuff to this. I even find just doing, just finding what your weak eye is and doing some, some pursuits and just seeing how, how much effect that has on you. For like, for instance, like when we're talking about, um, top down, bottom up approaches, like, um, if you, if you find that you get fatigued pretty easily and, you, and your, your pain gets worse throughout the day, then potentially these, so these eye drills are going to be quite good for you because they're a bit more, uh, top down. And so potentially you might have visual or vestibular issues that are contributing to muscular tone in your body. And so therefore, if you stimulate those pathways, they'll reset the tone. Now, how does that actually work? Because the muscles that control the eye muscles also control the tone of the muscles in the rest of your body. They're actually linked. Yeah? So I find that quite interesting. So we have obviously the midbrain, the midbrain and the medulla, they, they control flexion tone and the pons and the pons, cerebellum and the vestibular system, they all control extensive tone. So tone of the muscles at the back, tone of the, muscle, of the muscles at the front can be actually activated just by working um, through these eye muscles. So let me know how you go. Thank you.